Like many of you, we've been waiting for the much-anticipated Sue Gray report into the recent Partygate scandal. Until Friday, it was thought the report was going to be the thing to finally topple Johnson, the silver bullet to compound the litany of calls for his resignation. But fortunately for the Prime Minister, a last-minute intervention by the Metropolitan Police has changed everything. So, in this video, we're going to be explaining the report and asking whether Johnson might just have been saved by the police. But before we get into it, if you want to remember the parties we weren't invited to, check out the number 10 parties tour shirt and posters, and 50% goes to the National Emergency Trust COVID appeal. The link is in the description below. Now, there's a lot going on here, so you're going to need a bit of context. The investigation into Downing Street parties was launched on December the 9th, nine days after the Daily Mirror first reported that there had been parties in Downing Street during the winter lockdown of 2020. Originally, the investigation was led by Cabinet Secretary Simon Case, but he stepped down on December the 17th after his department, the Cabinet Office, admitted to holding a quiz night exactly a year before, on December the 17th, 2020. Case was replaced by the second Permanent Secretary to the Cabinet Office, Sue Gray. Now, while that title might not sound particularly impressive, even a bit niche, Gray is actually a political heavyweight. She previously worked in, and then ran, the proprietary and ethics team in the Cabinet Office throughout the 2000s and 2010s, where she became right-hand man to then Cabinet Secretary and Chief of the Civil Service, Jeremy Hayward. Thanks to Hayward's influence within government, and therefore by proxy, Gray's own influence, she was dubbed the most powerful person you've never heard of by the BBC in 2015. Gray took up her current position as second permanent secretary to the Cabinet Office in April of last year, when Michael Gove put her in charge of policy on the Union and Constitution. Anyway, since Gray replaced Case, her much-anticipated report has come to be known as the Sue Gray Report, and political Twitter has been having a lot of fun making Sue Gray-related memes, especially after Johnson repeatedly insisted that he would not resign or take any further action until the report was completed. And, well, this has all taken a lot longer than expected. Originally, the report was only about three parties, two parties in number 10 on the 27th of November and 18th of December 2020, respectively, and a third party at the Department of Education in December, which the Department of Education has now admitted to. So, everyone expected it to be done in a few weeks, but it also said that, where there are other credible allegations relating to other gatherings, these may be investigated. As seemingly endless allegations about new parties have come out, Gray has had to widen the scope of her investigation accordingly, and things have continued to simmer on, and it looked like things were going to be delayed even further on Tuesday when the Met Police announced that they would be investigating eight alleged Downing Street parties. According to the report's remit, if a matter is referred to the police, then the investigation may be paused. However, the Met Police quickly made it clear that they hadn't requested the report be delayed at all, and it was reported that Gray had finished her investigation by Tuesday. Now, this was widely perceived to be terrible news for Johnson. Previously, most commenters had expected Gray's report to be relatively muted. At worst, she might recommend that the Prime Minister's advisor on ministerial standards, Lord Geit, look into the Prime Minister's behaviour, in which case the Prime Minister would be under pressure to allow Guides to conduct his own inquiry. That Sue Gray's report had triggered a police investigation suggested that whatever was in it was going to be really bad, and even potentially criminal. Cabinet ministers doing the media rounds on Thursday, including Jacob Rees-Mogg and Kwasi Kwarteng, insisted that Johnson wouldn't have to resign if the police ended up questioning him under caution, which would make him a suspect. All in all, things weren't looking great for Johnson, especially because if the report was critical of Johnson, then Conservative MPs would be far more likely to send in their letters of no confidence to the 1922 committee. Tensions started rising, and political commentators got increasingly excited about its imminent publication. Johnson was then pressured the report, into committing to publish the full the report, report, something he'd previously copy. avoided. So can the Prime Minister confirm that he will publish the full Sue Gray report as he receives it? Mr Speaker, what I can tell him is that we've got to leave the report to the independent uh, investigator, as he knows. Uh, than what I said yesterday about that. I'm, I'm really will you sorry. publish it in full? 
Of course. So exactly as Sue Gray, the report as Sue Gray hands to you, that would be made public without any redactions? I, I can't go beyond what I said yesterday, but it, I, I, I stick completely by what I've the, uh, what I've said to the to the House of Commons. Much to every Westminster politico's dismay, the report wasn't published on Wednesday, and then nothing happened on Thursday either. Commentators started wondering what was holding the proceedings up. After all, if the report was finished on Tuesday, then why had nothing been published 48 hours later? But then on Friday, the Met admitted they'd asked Gray to amend her report to make, quote, minimal references to the events being investigated, and that Gray was having to amend the report to avoid it interfering with the ongoing investigation. Now, this was widely perceived as a massive win for Johnson, because it leaves Gray with essentially two options. Either she can wait until the police investigation is finished and then publish her report in full with all the juicy bits, or she can remove the juicy bits because they're presumably the bits that relate to the investigation and publish a redacted version sooner. Both of these are a whole lot better for Johnson than what everyone thought was going to happen, which was that Gray was going to publish the unredacted report in full in the next few days. If Gray waits, then the story will have died down by the time the police investigation finishes, because it'll probably take a few weeks, if not months, which means Johnson can more easily ignore it. If she publishes it in the next few days, the juicy bits will be redacted, which means Johnson can turn around to his MPs and the public and say, hey, look, the Sue Gray report wasn't so bad after all, even if that's only true because the police investigation had taken over the dodgiest bits. So you get the point, the Met's last ditch investigation seems to have helped Johnson, and who knows, might even have saved him his premiership. As a final thing, whatever side of the political aisle you're on, this isn't a good look for the Met. First, they declined to investigate the gatherings, arguing they didn't usually investigate crimes retrospectively and that there wasn't enough evidence to begin an investigation. Then, after the civil service steps in to fill the gaps and start their own inquiry, the Met U-turns, deciding to start its own investigation and consequently undermines the civil service inquiry. Essentially, the Met said they won't investigate until there's evidence, and then once Ugrain found the evidence, they told her to hide it again. Now, it's easy to get conspiratorial here, and some have suggested that the police are covering up Partygate because it would reflect badly on them if it came out that Whitehall, the most heavily policed area in the UK, was having non-stop illegal gatherings without the police doing anything about it. But this whole thing can just be explained by incompetence on the Met's behalf, and, in general, incompetence and cock-up is more likely than conspiracy. Nonetheless, the impression, even if misleading, of the police bailing out political leaders is undeniably a terrible look for both the Met and the UK. But what do you think about the situation? Has the Met's intervention saved Johnson? Or has this only delayed his fall from power? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. We might not be getting the full Sue Gray report for a while, but in the meantime, if you want to remember the parties we missed and get money to those in need of Covid support, then check out our number 10 parties Torsha and posters. They feature all of the parties that we know about so far, and hopefully look pretty cool too. The link's in the description and 50% of the profit to go to the National Emergencies Trust Covid Appeal, which helps those in the UK whose lives were affected during the pandemic. Thanks for your support. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description below.